What is going on, Financial Movers? I'm Jacob Barthel, founder of FinancialMovers.com, and I hope you had a wonderful weekend this past weekend. Today is Monday, and I'm gonna kick it off with Best Buy. I'm gonna be talking about Best Buy, the electronics goods store that has actually done a really good job moving their business over to e-commerce digitally. So, Best Buy. On November 24th, the company reported a strong earnings report, beat EPS by over 20 cents, and also beat on revenue. Revenue. Now, what's interesting is that Best Buy was trading at near all-time highs at $124 before reporting earnings. And then after reporting earnings, the stock sold off about 20% all the way down to $99 and is now trading at $101. So is this a buy on dip opportunity? Well, according to Goldman Sachs, no. So just last week on December 10th, Goldman Sachs released a statement, one of the analysts, saying that Best Buy still has room to drop going into 2021. So I wanna know, is Best Buy actually going to keep it dropping? Should investors stay away from it? Or is this a buy on dip opportunity? Why didn't Goldman Sachs tell us this before the stock dropped 20%? That's really my biggest question here. So instead of leaving it up to Goldman Sachs analyst, I'm going to go analyze uh, Best Buy's fundamentals and their technical charts myself and see what I come up with. So let's go. All right, Best Buy, ticker symbol BBY, trading at $100.31. I am recording this right now live while the market is trading, so the price may fluctuate a little bit here. A market cap of $25 billion, almost $26 billion. A price-to-earnings ratio of 15, which is about the median price-to-earnings ratio in the S&P 500, but it is lower than Target's, Walmart's, Costco's, etc. Also going to take a look at that price to sales that they got going on. So a price to sales ratio of 0.58, really not too high. A lot of companies over one, even two these days. So I also would just like to compare that price to sales of that Best Buy at the 0.58 right now, now 0.57. It doesn't look to be too high, especially compared to historic uh, price to sales where it does seem to hover between 0.4 and 0.5. So whenever it got up to 0.7 and then the price started to sell off because yeah, at that point it does look a little bit extended. I'm not surprised, but down here below 0.6, getting back to where point. Five was pretty average before between 0.4 and 0.5. Doesn't look too overextended. That is a lot lower than other companies like Walmart right now trading at a 0.76 price to sales. Uh, also Target at an over, just was over one. Now it's at a 0.97. So 0.57, 0.58 on Best Buy doesn't look too high. Now, before I go on ahead and get into the fundamental analysis and technical analysis of Best Buy, I'm gonna ask you to hit that thumbs up button, hit that uh, subscribe button, hit that notification button so you never miss out on another analysis from me also be sure to find me on instagram at financial movers where i'm constantly posting quotes financial information investment information etc also be sure to find me on twitter at financial movers i don't always have time to make a video for everything i'm buying trading investing etc so i do give descriptions with uh, pictures of charts and what i'm seeing got into amazon the other day at 3100 now at 3170 Okay, and lastly, be sure to sign up at webull.com for zero commission free trading, no deposit minimums, zero dollar commission free trading on stocks, options, ETFs, and cryptos. You can sign up right now for free and get two free stocks. You don't even have to put a dollar in your account, just create the account, get two free stocks. If you do deposit a minimum of $100, you get two more free stocks. So that is a total of four free stocks. Find the link in the description box below. It is my affiliate link, so please use it because if you get your free stocks, then I get some free stocks as well because you signed up using my link. So please support me and get your free stocks. We can all be happy. So getting into Best Buy's fundamental reports, their latest earning reports from November 24th, 2020. We got a lot 
to cover, so let's get to it. So Best Buy reported non-GAAP EPS of $2.06, which beat by $0.34. Cents. They also reported revenues of $11.85 billion, a 21.4% year-over-year increase, beat by almost a billion dollars, beat by $880 million. Comparable sales were up 23% versus what the consensus what the analysts thought it was going to be was 13.6%. Now, the stock did sell off from right before the earnings at about 124 going down to as low as now $100.28 going actually went down to about $99. And I think a lot of it had to do with what the CEF Oh, Matt Bulana said, he said, while the demand for the products and services we sell remains at elevated levels and we start the fourth quarter, it is very difficult for us to predict how sustainable these trends will be due to the significant uncertainty related to the various impacts of the pandemic. Okay, so he continued and said, thus similar to the last two quarters, we are not providing financial guidance today. People want guidance okay investors want guidance and i believe because he said that three weeks later just last week on december 10th goldman sachs went on ahead and said rough road ahead in 2021 for best buy and they said best buy is one of the best run retailers in the u.s and continues to evolve its omni channel but they don't believe that they will be able to give strong sales next year like they did this past year and they said it's lack of gross margin flow through 2020 and valuation is is basically the reasoning why. Okay, well, I don't believe that just this past year was a good year for Best Buy and that their reasoning is really that valid because looking at revenues going back of Best Buy over the past couple of years... Uh, in 2017, they reported $39 billion in revenue, 2018, $42 billion, 2019, $42 billion, and this year, $43 billion. So this company has had a quite a long record of reporting uh, in the billions of over $40 billion in revenues for a while, and it's actually increased just over the past, uh, since 2017 all the way to now, their revenues have been increasing, okay? That's also seen in their net income from 2018 on words their net income was going up even uh 2016 they're reporting 897 million in net income 2017 over a billion and from 2017 onward they reported over a billion dollars net income and since 2018 onward their net income has been increasing so i don't believe this year has just been kind of like a random year for them to make money they've actually been increasing revenues and net income for the past couple of years now so uh we'll see if this is a valid statement from goldman sachs but let's take a closer look into their earnings that they reported. Now, one thing I really like to see from the company whenever they reported was their domestic online revenue of $3.82 billion increased 173.7% on a comparable sale basis. And that is actually online revenue increased to approximately 35.2% versus 15.6% percent last year. I think that is good for Best Buy. That shows that they're able to stay up in that online space, in that digital space. And their CEO did say that their comparable sales grew a remarkable 23% because of their supply chain expertise, their flexible store operating model, and ability to shift quickly to digital. That was clearly seen in that massive uh, increase in their digital sales up 173%. I like to see that in a company. They were able to shift. Plenty of companies can't, especially with competitors like Amazon. Okay, just because of the current environment, in my opinion, uh, of, of the, the, the lockdowns and everything, Amazon's still a huge competitor. Walmart's still a big competitor. Target also. Now, Best Buy still grew. Their largest competitors are also online. They still grew. So anyways, let's just uh, keep seeing if Goldman Sachs' statement really holds up. So revenues. The revenues were up from this time last year, $9.7 billion that they reported this time last year, up to $11.8 billion in the most recent report here. Cost of sales did go up a little bit from $7.4 billion to $9 billion, and that did uh, in, uh, decrease that gross profit from 24.2% down to 23.6%, so about 
0.8% there or 0.6% uh, there that the that that the gross profit got cut by but their operating income still increased from 395 million to 561 million so yeah the gross profit did get cut by 0.6 of a percent but i do like that the operating income still increased by 0.7 of a percent and that was also seen in that 9 months ended going from 3.7% this time last year operating income to 4.5 percent so really still good the net earnings at 29 or 293 million dollars then going up to 391 million dollars so looking strong there on the nine months ended going from 79 796 million to 982 and obviously with that operating income going up their earnings per share did go up from a dollar 11 to one dollar and 50 cents as well so the revenues increased pretty good there this wasn't a this isn't a huge high margin business with operating income of only 561 million million of a total uh, gross profit of 2.79 billion but you know they're still coming out ahead increasing those revenues like we had seen earlier uh, compared to 2017 onwards so moving down on the balance sheet here they were able to increase that cash and cash equivalents on a major scale going from 1.2 billion to 5.1 billion dollars increasing those total current assets from 10 billion 10.1 billion to 14.5 billion so did a really good job there on that getting those total assets up from 16.9 billion to 21.2 billion on total assets a big increase now on their liabilities and their equity uh, their long-term debt only increased about 20 million dollars going from 1 billion 239 million to 1 billion 256 million dollars but their total liabilities and equity did increase here uh, it, it, but it looks to be really just on par with their total assets and their total liabilities and equity. So uh, it, it's a pretty good looking balance sheet here, in my opinion, especially increasing those uh, that cash and cash equivalents from 1.2 billion up to 5.1 billion. So I don't see any problem at all here with this balance sheet. It does look strong, have lots of cash on it. Now, their revenue category is interesting to look at. So on their comparable sales, yes, that was seen to be a, a major difference here with a lot of consumer electronics being up compared to this time last year and also appliances and the entertainment was also very big uh, up in, compared to this time last year, now at 17.5%. So this is really where Goldman Sachs is saying that Best Buy can't keep it up next year. So the question for me to you is, is are we going digital? Was this a one-time thing or are more people going to be working from home needing electronics, etc.? If you think yes, then this isn't a fluke year. Best Buy is going to continue on those strong digital growth sales. That's what I believe. And yeah, they're just going to keep pushing up stronger. I do think that this 20% uh, drop is more of a discount price right now and Best Buy. So let's jump over to that technical chart. So that company, yes, Best Buy did drop from $124 down to $99 at 20% drop, now at 137. So I will tell you right now, disclaimer, I did buy some Best Buy shares where I believed was some support at about the $103 mark, and I did put that on my Twitter. Now, that looks like it might be holding, but I am going to put up a 20-day moving average, a 50-day moving average, a 100-day moving average, and a 200-day moving average as well. I like that the stock was able to hold above this 200-day moving average that I've seen so far. If it does fall through it, this stock did gap up back on 21st of July from uh, about $90, $89, $90 up to $96, about that $95 mark. So if the stock does fall through this 200 day moving average, I do believe that this $95 mark could be a good mark to pick it up. And I will tell you, as I already said, I did buy some shares here at 103. So I believe 95 would be another good level to get it at. But we'll see if this 200 day moving average holds. And if it does, then I, I believe that's a good spot as well to maybe even pick up some more shares. Uh, if an investor isn't already in, it's a good spot. 
Now, if it falls through the 95, then I believe 90 will definitely be a place that this stock will hold, especially going back to the December of this time last year, about the $90 mark was resistance level before the stock sold off in February and in March, where many stocks did, and then it moved higher and then gapped up over that 90 and started going on to make all time highs. Now on a weekly chart, I would also like to point out that this stock is trading very near to its 50 day moving average. And I believe it will be picked up on a weekly chart on that 50 day moving average, which does correlate on that $95 mark, right where the stock gapped up back in February or uh, back in July. So in my opinion, Best Buy is a great buy on dip opportunity. I'm already in at 103. Their financials look strong. Everything looks good to me. In my opinion, maybe you don't think so after we went over this, but I really like this Best Buy. So yeah, that's what I got for you today. Financial movers, if you got anything out of this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button. And if you didn't, then be sure to still go over to We Bowl, the description or the uh, link is in the description box below and get your free stocks. All right, good luck out there, financial movers, and see you next video.